Hey, good evening. It's Tuesday, September 24th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. We're looking at this amazing prayer of Jesus in John 17. These, the last few hours, he's going to be here on earth, subject to the constraints of the body that he had so that he could live a life that would rescue you and me. So this is about to be over. He's with the disciples in the upper room, and they've just had their last supper together, the, the last Passover, the first Lord's Supper. And he talks with them, and now he's praying. He's praying for the, his disciples in that room, but as we looked at last night, he's also praying for those who would hear the message that they give. I pray also for those who will believe in me through the message. And that's you and me. And several just amazing components here. But in verse 13, just look, Jesus says, I'm coming to you now, talking to the Father. But I say these things while I am still in the world so that they, the ones who are hearing them and the ones who would hear the message, they may have the full measure of my joy within them. Jesus is praying that those who know him would come to know him would have the full measure of Christ's joy. Do we pray for joy often? Do we pray for it the way that Jesus means? Because he can't mean that he's about to have a good time. He's about to be separated from his father. He's about to be punished for my sins. All of them. All the ones I can think of and all the tons more that I can't think of. As well as for every other one that he's called. He's about to know the ugliness that should have been mine. He's about to know the pain that should have been mine. He's about to know the punishment and the separation from his father that should have been mine. And yet he says, I want them to know the full measure of my joy within them. So he's not talking about avoiding hard times. He's not talking about avoiding suffering. He's not talking about betrayal. Because all of his disciples who were pledging their allegiance to him right there in the room would betray him. Only John would come back. And him not all the way, but just somewhat. These 12 men that he had spent the last three years with, one of them had left, already left to betray him. The other 11 typified by Peter's response, I don't even know the man when asked about it. So he's not talking about joy, meaning I'm not going to be betrayed. He is going to be betrayed. So what, is he t what does he mean here by joy? The joy that he's finding is that he's doing what the Father asked him to do. He is living life on the basis of what the Father asked Jesus to do. That brought him joy, full joy. And he wants you and me to know that same joy so that we can be committed to bringing honor to the Father, to causing the reputation of God to be held in high esteem that all who know us, they give honor to God because of what they see of God in us. Jesus took joy in that. And he wants you and me to have that full joy. There are many, many hard things in this life. Hard things. And Jesus knew that more than anyone. But he's still praying earnestly, 
so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. That's what Jesus wants for us. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. It's not dependent upon our circumstances. It's not dependent upon what happens to us. It's not dependent upon who loves us or doesn't love us. When we are in line, when we are doing what the Father has called us to do, we can know joy. And Jesus knew that his Father would hear him. And even with the immense pain that he's about to take on, he knows that he will be one with his Father. Complete and whole again. Just as you and I know, because this word tells us that Jesus will bring us home to be with him. See, when you feel overwhelmed without hope, when you feel like you can't go on, when you feel as though you really are alone, Jesus says, I want the full measure of my joy to be within you, to guard you, to protect you, to know that your Father will make all this more than right to share, shed his abundant grace because we will be with him just as Jesus came to be with him and be one with him. Again, I love your thoughts, your feedback. Do we want joy or do we just want momentary happiness? Jesus wants us to have the joy of being totally given over to what the Father's called us to be, the full measure of his joy. That is where we find peace, contentment, and the strength to go on. Again, love your thoughts and feedback. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night.